Paddy's gearing up for the GAA All-Ireland Football and Hurling. For all live TV championship games, it's money back as a free bet if your losing first goal scorer scores a goal anytime. Max £20. Excludes shops. T's and C's apply. 18 plus. BeGambleAware.org. Hello and welcome along to the GAA Postcast. I'm David Jennings and we have a jam-packed show for you this week with five football matches down for decision and the eagerly anticipated Leinster Hurling Championship showdown between Kilkenny and Wexford. We'll be joined by Cats legend Cha Fitzpatrick to get the lowdown on that one. But before that, we're going to run through the football matches and uh, we've got uh, former Mayo All-Star Conor Mortimer on the line and we've also got uh, Paddy Ahern from our sponsors, Paddy Power. How, how are you, lads? How are you getting on? How are you? Not too bad. How are you, Connor? I suppose it's a it's a long time since people away from Dublin club football have seen you in action. Uh, how's that old left foot uh, coming on? Uh, it's, it's it's dormant at the moment. Right. <laughs> Has been for a while now. I I played a game a couple of weeks ago. I fractured a couple of bones in my hand, so I've been out. It's the first game back in probably twelve months. I'd say I was playing soccer for the, for pretty much most of the last season, and just ten minutes into the match, I kind of fractured two bones in my hand. So that's kind of. Put it on the back burner again now, so it might be staying dormant, I think, this time. To be no incoming call from Stephen Rochford anytime no, soon, so... No, I don't think so, no. So, won't be let's before, playing anyway. <laughs> before we run through this week's games, eh, we're just going to have a, a, a brief look back to last weekend, and unfortunately, once again, uh, the headlines were led by a, a Dermot Connolly incident. Um, it's, it's, it's a tough one. It's, we've obviously read plenty about it uh, during the week, um, Connor. What's your what's your opinion on, on on the ban, the imposed ban of twelve weeks, and um, have you any sympathy for him at all? Ah, look, I just have to. I think you know, honestly, the, the best players not playing over, I suppose, uh, minor incidents. Uh, I think that's what it's down as a minor infraction of an official or whatever. I think. Um, I, look, at the, the bottom line is rules are rules. I think everyone has to adhere to them, and if you put your hand on a linesman or a referee, you're going to get you're going to get in trouble for it. I think that's exa- that's what happened. Uh, regardless of of how or why it happened, um, I think the biggest question is why did the linesman or the referee not not do anything about it? If it was, if it was, I suppose a big issue. I think um, you know. I think the, the the publicity after it and and the Sunday game that night as well might have, I suppose, stirred up a few thoughts in the referee's mind as well, and obviously put in the report for the next day. So, look at it, it's 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 opposed um, I think if he appeals it I think he's obviously a good chance of getting off it I think um, I think he'll find some technicalities along the way there that, that don't add up on, in the in the process part of it uh, but Absolutely but let's call a spade a spade here this is the equivalent back in your Mayo days you're playing Leitrim in the first round of the Connacht mm-hmm. Championship you're winning comfortably you're going to win the game like how can he lose the head in an instant like that when it doesn't even matter, like it's a line ball. Like I, I, he obviously plays the game on the edge, but there's something seriously wrong here for him to to have such a temper in a game like that. Surely, um, I, I wouldn't really agree because I think look at if you're if you're playing at the top level and and it doesn't matter who you're playing. Every game you play, if it's Leitrim, if it's Carlo, if it's Kerry, or if it's Mayo or Dublin or whoever you're playing. You're, for those 70 minutes, I mean, it's, it's a championship game and you want to get the best out of, out of what you can give to the team. And look at it, I, I suppose there was a bit of pull and drag on, on the sideline when it happened and obviously tempers, I suppose, flared. And look at it, I, I suppose, and I said it for a couple of years, it reminds me of Roy Keane back in the day. And that, that that's just the way Jeremy Pandy plays and it's the way, obviously, Roy Keane would have played. They're not things you want to change about players, you know, losing heads or tempers or whatever. That's, you know, if you take take the... The aggression and the, you know, that passion out of Jeremy Connolly, you're not going to have the same player. I think that that's that's just the way he is, and that's that's what he does. And whether, as I said, whether it's Carlo or, or Dublin or Mayo, you're playing against, you know, it's it, look, it's very easy to say, you know, why would you get so worked up about it? But look, there was obviously, I, I suppose, he is targeted every game, and particularly against the teams that you're expecting to beat. Well, they, you know, they'll target you a little bit more, and I think referees. You know, have a part to play in it as well. They they let certain stuff go against you know with the Carlos and you know the Leitrims and you know the, the not so much the bigger top three or four teams. Where if, if that was against Mayo, a little bit of pull and drag, and I can you can be sure that whoever is doing it would be getting penalised. And a, lot, a bit of stuff is let go in, in in those situations, considering Dublin were so far ahead. Mm. 
Paddy, you're the odds compiler here. What's the chances of Dermot getting off uh, completely? Or is, is there any betting at all on, on, on the Dermot Connolly incident? Yeah, we actually we had a market up earlier on the week, but we've actually taken it down now because I think it, it's nearly it's nearly today left to decide whether he'll appeal. Mm. But I don't think he is going to appeal. Like we were kind of told, the, the money told us earlier in the week that people don't think he's going to get off this, and I wouldn't be surprised if you know whether it's Gavin or whether there's some people in Dublin that are losing a little bit of patience with this and might just take him aside and say just take your three months. You know, like he's going to come back on the I think it's going to be the morning of an All Ireland semi final, and like there is an argument that if you think they would be going through Leinster and they're all earning quarter final that they might need him but like I'm I'd be fairly confident that he won't even appeal this I think he's just going to take it on the chin and at the end of the day like he always gets himself in these situations like this is I'm not you, you can say that like you can definitely say that it was a minor incident and it was but like it, it always seems to be Jeremy who's involved in it like, he, like even if he didn't he this would have been a third black card in a row since he came back from Vincent's like there has to there is I, I agree with you Dave to be honest that there's a there's a little bit of a problem there like or a big problem to be honest with discipline and there's it's it, it would be worrying to me that there's no sign of it getting any better to be honest like yeah it's a little bit worrying um certainly it, it will be fascinating to and, and people listening to this will probably know know at, at at this stage um if he has got off or not or whether he's appealing it um and and as you said 12 weeks it's still it's still not ideal for Dublin. And overall, no. I- if he is out for until a semi-final, um, did we learn anything more about the new kind of Dublin faces coming in? Uh, Conor Callaghan was on the fringes. Uh, Scully was quite good. D- did you think we learned anything new from Dublin, uh, Paddy? Uh, no, not at all, to be honest. like I think Conor Callaghan got a bit of a culture shock, really, because there was a lot expected of him before the game. But like it's arguable that he's never played in a game like that where he was completely swamped out for the whole game because Dublin club football would be a little bit more open. And like even when he's playing under 21, they tend to be a little bit higher scoring. So uh, like he tapped over a few frees in, uh, uh, at the end of the game. But before that, like he didn't do an awful lot. And I just think it's it's kind of feeding into this Dublin thing that we've been seeing all year that like they got caught the league final but they had the three draws in the league and you know even the Monaghan game they were very lucky to come out of it and everyone was saying oh it's it's the character in this Dublin team but like if you keep you know I don't think it's a good sign that, that teams are keep keep running them so close like you know when they're not I know we're talking in betting terms here but they're not beating handicaps they're not impressing and like it might be a, everyone's saying it's a Gavin plan to, to peak in August but it's not as easy as that either like you have to be kind of playing well in the run up too like we, we, we pushed obviously with the Conley thing and the performance we pushed them 13 to 8 and I'm happy laying that price to be honest so 13 to 8 Dublin uh, to India Ireland would you be getting stuck in at that Connor? Um, I w- well I wouldn't be backing them in the first place but look at I think you know, in relation to to where Dublin are at, uh, look. But I just think it's it's Dublin are just going to have to, I suppose, navigate their way through their games. If it's by a point, it's obviously not good for the bookies. They're not winning by twenty points, but I think it's up to the other teams that need to step up here and 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 chat and take them on and and try and beat them. I mean, we all ran very close last year and probably should have beat them in the first game. Um, you know, Dublin didn't really set the world alight last year throughout there and they still won the All-Ireland so I mean the other teams aren't stepping up enough I think um, you know going back to your point about have they changed much they haven't really and and, and look at I, I don't think they will I think even these young fellas coming in individually you'll see a little bit of difference but the Dublin from the under-21s to the seniors they, they play very very similarly and that's I suppose the the motion in Dublin is when you come into the senior squad that you're you're ready to play straight away and you know I I don't think that you know I I don't think they're going to miss Jim Connolly usually they haven't in the last five years up to the semi final so I mean I I don't see other teams you know too many names stepping up you have me all carry obviously you're looking for one more to to come in there and and make a push for it as well but they should coast away through to the to the quarter, to the semi final and. Look, he'd be back for that. I, I'd agree with David there. I don't think he will appeal it, and I, I think he just should just take it and, you know, let it die down for the few weeks and and do his own bit of training. And he'll look at they, they will need him if they want to win the All Ireland. There's no two ways about that. If they and I'd imagine they will be in it come semi-final time. And 
you know, it's 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 no bad days to have have probably your best player coming back for a semi final, you know. Hopefully a nice boost, all right, going into the last four. And quickly, lads, on last week, um just just very, very quickly, uh, Mead and Kildare both had huge wins. Um I was in uh, Parnell Park watching Mead beat loud. Probably the most open game of football I've seen in the last 10 years. It was ridiculous. There was no sweepers. There was no defensive strategy on either team. Loud pushed up on the kickouts and it was just carnage. 27 points to 3-8. It could have realistically been 5-35 to to, to 8-20. That's, that's how open it was. Um, Annie, Annie, did Mead or Kildare shorten for Leinster, Paddy? Uh, they did, yeah, they did a bit, right? So, like, obviously, we, 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 you know, we pushed out Dublin just a touch. So, I think we are tens Kildare and maybe elevens um, with our elevens Mead now at the minute. I would think in Leinster that um, Kildare might have a bit of a better chance of beating Dublin, just because, as you said, like that Mead Loud game was just so open. I mean, Loud scored three goals, and like if you were at the game, you'd know that they could have scored. They scored could have scored five, and that would be my slight worry with Mead. They might get away with it against Kildare because that's going to be a really open game as well. But I just think defensively, Kildare might be slightly better. So, in a word, Mead. lads, uh, who wins between Mead and Kildare, Connor? Uh, I think Kildare beats them to be honest I think they're more Paddy? structurally better yeah, Kildare but it's it's going to be high score and it's going to be close Okay, dokes. I, I'll have to fly the meat flag there uh, for my home home county. But moving on to this week, obviously, Connor, we've got you on, and and Mayo fans will remember you from your your days in in the green and red shirt. And a, a huge a huge game in Pier Stadium on Sunday between Mayo and Galway. Um, obviously, Galway won one twelve to twelve points at the same stage last year. Mm. Uh, Paddy, first of all, how do we bet on this match? Yeah, um, we are Galway at home. It's on Salt Hill, obviously. So uh, Galway fifteen to eight. The draw is eight to one. Mayo are four to seven, and it's a two point handicap. Ten to eleven. Goal with a handicap draw seventeen to two, and Mayo minus two is eleven to ten. Connor, we have to come to you here first. Uh, this Mayo team um, under Stephen Rochford, how is it evolving? And and do you like the do you like what you see so far in two thousand seventeen, or have they taken a backward step from last year? Um, I think it's probably too early to tell. Really, I don't I, look at the league wasn't. Uh wasn't great for Mayo. I think um, look at he tried one or two players later in the league. I think Young Ball in the Senate at the weekend as well. I I would have liked to have seen probably more more of the under twenty ones given chances and and given three or four games, just to see you know to try and see can they step up again, particularly against the the top division one A teams. Um, you know, have they taken a step back? Uh, you know, I go back to it again. I think they'll be there, thereabouts at the end of the year again. I, I just, I don't think there's there's too many other teams out there. Look at, I mean, the game at the weekend. If Mayo are, are are to be defeated at the weekend, it'll be a big, big blow. I think um, to have no silverware in the last two years is is not considering that team has been used to of winning championships. I think they had five kind of championships in a row previous to last year, and and they they were. They were caught cold last year against Galway. Um, that, that the goal that Galway got was was a mistake from Mayo and bad not as Mayo played. They only lost it by that goal. I think um, Galway have had a good start to this year uh, National League final. Um, you know they've they brought back a couple of the older heads as well, Sean Armstrong, Michael Meehan, just to add a little bit of experience. And Armstrong on the pitch and obviously Michael Meehan is injured, but you know to have his head around the place for the younger lads. They'll be hard bet. Um, Salt Hill is a tough place to go, and you could a lot of it will boil down to the weather as well at the weekend. If it's a, if it's a miserable day, it'll be a lot more difficult. But I do think that Mayo will have learned from the goal again last year. I think um, you know I, I don't know if Aidan O'Shea will start or not. Obviously, Conor O'Shea is injured, so you know I, I would like to see him start. I know he's an injury as well; he's a groin injury himself, so he'd be a great player to bring into the game because they will need him to get, to get over the line at the weekend because the confidence would be high in Galway and you know Mayor are going up there confident and I, I genuinely think they will win the game I think they'll have learned as, as I said from last year and they won't be caught cold as they were last year I mean, it, was a bit, it was a fairly big shock last year for Galway to beat them you know in around Ireland considering Mayo have been in probably the last couple of All-Ireland finals and, and won the kind of championships fairly comfortably previous to that so you know, I'm looking forward to it, and I, I think you know, we all put in a big performance the weekend. Paddy, I'm going to throw my two pence worth into the hat here, and uh, I'm hoping you're going to agree with me. I think that Mayo are absolute certainties, and that the two point handicap could be obliterated. Agree or disagree? I would strongly disagree. Yes, um... I love a battle. <laughs> I let you, I let you I... give your case first. 
Yeah, like, like Connor pointed on this that like if I think if O'Shea doesn't play that Galway have a massive, massive chance in this match because like he generally what he is is he's he always plays really well against Galway and they they still haven't kind of figured out how to deal with him because he's just a complete wrecking ball. He just goes in, he's like he's kind of all over the place, he's winning ball. It's just one of those games that he, he always gets really, really up for. Now I wasn't I wasn't aware that he had the slight groin injury, but and I I couldn't believe that he wasn't starting yesterday. I'd I'd still I'd still be about tens on that he will start. But well it wouldn't I'll be tens on, but I I, I think I'd, it'd be slight I, odds I, on that he's No, starts. I'd say he will. Like I'd I'd I really I'd I'd be baffled now if he didn't like because he's so important to Mayo as well. Like you saw in that last league game against Johnny Gall that like Mayo would be Mayor were going to get bet in that game and he came on for the last 10 minutes and completely changed it like I, what I'll probably be doing like I'm going to the match myself on Sunday but I'd be having a very very close look at team news 10, 15 about 10 or 5 minutes beforehand and if I see O'Shea isn't playing then then, then the money is down in goal Now no my theory on this is uh, I, I'd give you a bit of 4 out of 10 for that argument um, my theory on this is last year Galway won 1 12 to 12 points as Connor alluded to there a, a stupid kick out um, a, a goal against a run of play and, and I don't think I've Mayo have put in some bad performances in the last five years but I think that was the worst I've ever seen Mayo play they were lethargic the hand passing was off everything was off and they were still only beaten by that goal uh, 2015 it was 115 to 28 to Mayo 2014 it was 314 to 16 points 2013 was 416 to 11 points now I know it's uh, Galway have evolved since then but I still think Mayo are a different level to Galway. And even during the league, them Division 1 matches are played at such a different intensity to the Division 2 matches. Galway were Galway were probably the best team in Division 2, but just about. And uh, I think the first game against Sligo, I, I, I genuinely think that Mayo play better against better teams. They're better equipped to, to deal with better teams and, and they can... Teams that sit back, it just doesn't suit them. I, I think they like to play more in the counter attack. Connor, what do you think? Do you think Mayo, genu- gen- like even in the last couple of years we've seen it, their best performances have come as late in the year as possible? No, They're no, probably absolutely. not the best at, at dealing with the weaker teams. The bigger the bigger the game, I think, that, because we know a lot of big game players, I think. No, I have to agree with you in relation to the, because Galway is a big, big game. Um, after that round of finals, it's the Galway game is probably the biggest game that that may all have. Out and it doesn't matter who you're playing the quarter final. If it's not Galway, it doesn't have the same take on the game. Um, I I think the only question that need, that needs to be asked me: oh, this, this Mayo team has been probably five, six, seven years on the road, and if there if there's a slight win. In, in in that team and and obviously Galway as we said are 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 improving. They're not look they're not just they're not in the in the top three or four teams. That's what they're aspiring to obviously. But if if there's a little chink and, and there's a little bit of tiredness and you know the last ten minutes Galway are two or three points up, it'll really really tell a tale if the Mayo team has got that hunger and fight because hunger in this game, like Galway obviously won it last year. Mayo have five previous to that. I mean. Who's going to be hungrier tomorrow or Sunday? Mm. That's that's the, that's the biggest question. I think if if Mayo are, aren't aren't as hungry as as Galway will be, then they'll you know it'll be a struggle. No, I think uh, look, I don't think there's going to be seven or eight points in it, but I do think Mayo will win it by three or four points. I think they've they've better quality players, as we mentioned, Ed Noche as well. There, um, you know, Galway's league league final performance is quite poor, um, and and. They're they're a fairly defensive side, as as you've said. There, we do struggle, you know, with, with teams that, that tend to sit back. But I mean, if we if if we're to get a goal or two at the weekend, I think you know I'll, you'll see your bet coming in. If we if we are, to, I think we we'll win it comfortably enough. But if we don't, and it's it's a point for point game, I think always forwards they're quite good forwards and they're very confident. Um, and it'll it'll be you know it'll probably go down to the wire if we don't get a goal or two. So before we move on, lads, the best bet on the on the on the match coupon, uh, Connor, you're you're slightly favour Mayo. Um, yeah, I would be. Yeah. I look at it, I'd have I'd have I'd have fair confidence in them now to to do to do what they have to do. I, I as I said, I did a bit last night with Parra Joyce, and he was three to four goal, and I'm three three or four points to Mayo. So I'd be fairly confident of that. Paddy. Yeah, um, like I say, I'd probably like I'd, if if I had to have a bet in the match, betting I'd probably back Galway. Uh, there was a couple of bets I 
kind of thought about um, in the match. It's just because Saul did, like, it's hard to know what the weather is going to be like, but, like, there's always a big, massive wind there. So I think you could probably, like, with with that wind, sometimes it can, it's it's generally a five to six shot who's going to lead at half time. You can back Galway at seven to four to basically get the wind, I think. And, like, I wouldn't put anyone off, off doing that. And I've often tipped that bet. It's a nightmare because then you have absolutely no chance if you're against the wind. Yeah, that's it. But it's not like, you, like you, you're you're kind of backing a seven to four against on, a, on maybe a five to six shot. So yeah, probably, absolutely. Yeah, like yeah, you're, yeah. You're, you're, the odds are kind of in your favour. And if I was having another bet in the match, I'd probably back... I think Damien Comer's a decent enough price for a first goal. There's about fifteen to two out there, and if he gets a, if he can possibly get one on one with Kefrick, he, I think um, he could do a fair bit of damage. Okay, Oaks. Well, I, I'm I'm all in a Mayo here. Minus two at t- eleven to ten, I think is is pro- probably the best bet of the summer so far. Seven to two minus six, that might be worth a little bit as well. Mayo over sixteen five point five points, that could be worth a bet as well. And I'm convinced there's a huge game brewing in Dermot O'Connor. Um, I think he's twelve to one for man of the match. So. That'd be my last um, I'm I'm all in on Mayo. So there we go. That's Mayo and Galway in the Connacht semi-final on Sunday. Um, very quickly, lads, Cavan and Monaghan. I have a feeling this is going to be lower scoring than the Mayo-Galway match. Uh, Connor, Cavan or Monaghan, who, who do you fancy? Uh, I'm going to go Monaghan on that. Yeah. Monaghan, yeah, the better better side. More quality, sure side, yeah. I've seen McManus and the Jack McCarran back if he hasn't played in the last couple of years as well. He's a great addition to them. So I think Monaghan will win it, by, win it comfortably enough, I think, yeah. Okay, a comfortable win for from on in for Connor Mortimer, Paddy Hearn. Yeah, I don't know how comfortable it'll be. Like, I, if 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 I think Monaghan Monaghan will probably win the game, but this is going to be pure Ulster Championship warfare. Like, this is going to be low scoring, probably a crack game of football. But um, and I'd say it's going to be very tight. Uh, like, I wouldn't put off anyone. I think this this draw half time, draw full time is about forty to one. You could have a couple of quid in that, and no goal scorers nine to two. Like, I think it's going to be. I I I wouldn't be surprised. I think Monaghan will pip it, but I wouldn't be surprised to draw here either. Yeah, I, uh, unlike my own Galway, um, I'm I'm singing from the same hymn sheet, Paddy. Uh, seven points each this game finished in the league. It was an awful encounter. Um, yeah, under twenty nine point five points is the I think that's the gauge at the moment. Um, I could I, yeah, I, I like, can't see how there's going to be thirty points in the game. Yeah, we do, I, we're not we're, we won't be going any bigger than that. I wouldn't think anyway. I'd say it's going to be it's going to be very tight. Yeah, I, I think, uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if there was no Cavan goal scorer either. I think that's around 10 to 11. Uh, Cork and Tipperary. Connor, this Cork team um, has got probably the most negative press of any team in the country following their their uh, lucky escape uh, in Friar Field against, against Waterford. Um, they're better than that, are they? Uh, are they? I don't know. I don't know. That, look, they have quality players, but they're, they're, they're so gentle and Jekyll and Hyde, they're so hot and cold. It's it's it'll be very difficult. It's very difficult to call because I I seen a couple of clips earlier in the week there in relation to Cork that if they lose this game, they're they're literally going to the abyss. I think. Um, look, uh, I know Tipperary are missing quite a few players. If if it was the Tipperary team that played against Mayo last year, I'd be saying Tipperary all day. But due to the amount of players that they're missing and and obviously Comerford is out suspended as well, I'm, I'm going to go with Cork. I think. Uh, you know Waterford you know a bit like Mayo playing Leitrim you, you know it's difficult to get yourself up for it regardless what, what kind of a canal realm your team is in I think you know Tipperary's a big game for Cork and the low carries will probably be on the other side waiting for them in a, in a Munster final which they need to get back to considering it's on in, in their new stadium in, in, in this summer if it's built for them if they're, if they're able to get to that stage so I, I'm going to slightly go with Cork not hugely confident in it but just due to their, the calibre and the amount of players that Tipperary are missing, so I think Cork will beat them. Yeah, don't blame you. I don't think it's very hard to be uh, very confident about this Cork team. Um, yeah. Paddy, uh, like the one thing I will say about this game, it's going to be potentially completely different to the Waterford match, and that Waterford brought 40 men behind the ball, and Cork found it very hard to break down. Tipperary don't play like that, so this will suit Cork better. Yeah, it will a small bit, but like I mean, the, the game last year was really, really high score, and what there was five goals and whatever, and Cork still got bet like. I'd worry about Cork in the sense that fair enough it was kind of hard to break Waterford down but they're still relying on you know Dunnick O'Connor 36 to come on and I can't believe he was only 36 I thought he was about 46 exactly like I mean he's nearly as old as you Connor (laughs) 35 last week um, yeah I, I, I've you know I, I've people coming up to me all week saying how this is this is an unbelievable car price and all this like but you want to be very very brave to be 
back in Cork like at 4-7 or you know like even a two point handicap in this because like Tip are missing a couple and, and I agree Comerford is a massive massive loss because of what he offers them with kick out like but like you still have Connor Sweeney you still have Quinn Living who are like proven score getters and I like if I had to have a bet like I I I think I'd back tip in the match, but like I think you'd be very brave, like really, you know, putting all your faith in Cork here towards them. Mm, I think Cork will probably just shade it. Um, I think it'll be a different game. And Claire, Claire and Kerry, um, obviously Kerry are, are are much shorter. It's hard to believe that probably, you know, what three or four years ago Kerry and Cork would have been regarded as pretty similar, pr- pretty similar prices for games like this. But uh, Kerry one to ten, Paddy, and eight point handicap. Uh, I think we're one to fourteen. We're we are we're an eight point handicap, even money carry, and uh, ten to eleven plus clear. Or very plus quickly, eight. which side of the handicap would you be on? I wouldn't have a massive opinion on it, but yeah, going to my head, I'd probably back the carry side. Uh, uh, Connor, this carry team have to impress you. Obviously, they were very good in the league. Do you think they can go all the way? Uh, they'll be there. They'll be there thereabouts. Yeah, they will. They've they've unearthed a couple of new gems as well into their team, and and they seem to be uh, you know seamlessly joining into to the current squad as well. I think they'll they'll have a they'll have a very good shout at the end of the year. Um you can be sure they'll be there in, in the semi finals. Um you now it's Dublin and is it it's Mayo and I think it's Connacht and Munster in the semi finals. So you'll be looking at Mayo hopefully and, and Kerry in the semi finals. I'd 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 go with the, the handicap for for the game at the weekend as well. I think they'll they'll be motoring well and they'll be looking to get to, to get through Munster fairly comfortably and fairly quickly to get themselves settled for the for the quarter final come August. So Kerry minus eight for Connor Mortimer and any views on Offaly Westmead lads, obviously the the lowest profile game of the weekend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, lowest profile, but it's probably my strongest opinion. Go on, Paddy. Uh, yeah, I, Westmead. Like we we had a bit of a disagreement about this in the office as well, but in Westmead they're going to win this. Like, yeah. um, they're like if you look at their their Leinster championship record, the last two years has been really really good, and that's after coming off shocking leagues. Now, like they've they've got a heap of confidence up by just going like they're they're beating poor teams, but they're still doing it well in Division Four. Um, they seem to be a team to me that like they're kind of maturing as every year goes on and I'm really just like I'm not hearing great things coming out awfully and even with team selection at the weekend I, I really don't know which kind of awfully is going to show up like that that Armagh game in the league where they shipped whatever 6-14 like uh, I, I don't think they're going to ship that much this time and last year was kind of tight but I think Westmead yeah Westmead minus one evens would be my bet of the week I think they're they're going to cover that comfortably Shh, don't be giving away your nap yet uh, Paddy uh, I, I can't see you Connor, but I suspect you're nodding along there? Uh, no, you'd have to be in agreement, yeah. I think Offaly's I, I don't think the confidence is going to be very high down there, just uh, like that That our mass score was unbelievable when it, when it came through throughout the league there, I mean, that's that's few scores to be shipping, I mean, even if 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 they're to put X amount behind the ball at the weekend, which they probably will um, I, you can't see anything else other than other than Westmead winning it, winning it fairly comfortably, I'd say. They're you know, they're, they're just they've been decent enough over the last couple of years. They haven't had too many runs in the championship now, but I think they're they're a good few steps ahead of Offaly at the moment in the in the football stakes. Absolutely, and I'm going to make it a clean sweep for Westmead here. I think I agree with Paddy. I think they'll beat the handicap as well. So that's it for part one, lads, where we looked at the five football matches down for decision this weekend. Uh, we've got a competition for a free €25 Euro or £25 free bet. Uh, last week's winner was Kevin Hewitt from Sussex. We have Sussex followers who correctly answered that Pat Gilroy was a Dublin manager before Jim Gavin. And this week's question is... What was the name of the linesman whom Dear McConnelly got up close and personal with at Port Leash last Saturday night? So who was the linesman that had uh, that Dear McConnelly got up close and personal with at Port Leash last Saturday night? Tweet your answer with the hashtag postcast and the winner will get a €25 Euro or £25 free bet. Paddy's gearing up for the GAA All-Ireland Football and Hurling. For all live TV championship games, it's money back as a free bet if your losing first goal scorer scores a goal any time. Max £20. Excludes shops. T's and C's apply. 18 plus. BeGambleAware.org. Welcome back to part two of our GAA postcast. And I'm privileged to be joined by uh, Cats legend James Chaff. It's Patrick. Um, who, uh, five, what can you say? Five All-Irelands, three All-Stars, three National Leagues, seven Leinster titles. We're privileged, Paddy, aren't we? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Right. And before before we welcome you, uh, uh, Cha, I just want to know, first of all, how did the name Cha come about? 
Um, there's a couple of different theories, but apparently... We only want to know the truth now. <laughs> apparently from the cartoon character called Charlie Brown. So oh, all right. I've been called that ever since. Just Cha for short. So I've, been sure, ca- right? I've been called worse now. To be honest. <laughs> so have we all. And uh, we're, we're, we're going to go into Wexford's uh, clash with Kilkenny uh, in a couple of moments. But just a quick reflection on Clare and Limerick uh, last weekend. And Chad was a little bit of a damp squib, wasn't it? It never really got going. Clare always looked like they were doing enough. And this Limerick team continues to disappoint. What did you make of it all? Yeah, well, look, they got the job done. They'll be happy with that. And you could say it's kind of an easy route into the Munster final. But... Um, they won't care. They won't care if, if they were if they were a horse. They come on for the run, and um, they'll be looking forward to the, the Munster final. But you know, are they really all Ireland contenders? I don't. I don't know yet. But uh, did they have three hundred twenty ones, uh, three hundred twenty one titles under their belts? And you know, they still really. You know, a lot of people expected them to, to win another senior all Ireland, all Ireland, and that hasn't happened yet. So um, this year, just no. It's it's a real open look. So um, they're in the mix anyway. And watching the game, quality-wise, didn't really live up to expectations, did it? Yeah, maybe it was more of, you know, um, a lot of people were, you know, disappointed with the Limerick's performance and, uh, you know, um, Claire, you know, they weren't really impressive, but sure, all you can beat is, is, is you know, what's in front of you. Um, so... You know, for where do Limerick go from here? Jeez, like the back door is is very difficult this year. You know, you have Tipperary there as well. After the weekend, you're going to have Wexford, or Kenny. You know, so um, it's it, it's not going to be easy with whatever door you take this year. Paddy, I have a theory on Limerick. Paddy, Are you listen. I am. They're just no good. <laughs> <laughs> am I right? I, 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 since that since that unfortunate semi final defeat to Kilkenny couple of years ago I've been telling everybody that this Limerick team will win All Ireland at some stage and I've just given them far too many chances they're just actually no good the, their system is not working their players have gone backwards players that I thought yeah. would be blossoming they're gone backwards and it's I just I, I fear for Limerick I really really do um, I, I could see a new manager this time next year I could see them falling asunder am I wrong? Yeah I wouldn't I wouldn't go that far because I I do think they have a couple of decent players like but you'd have to worry about them in the sense that like when it was in the melting pot they were relying on the likes of like Sean uh, Sean Finn and 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 Kyle Hayes who was making his debut like mm. uh, but you know where were the leaders at that stage like the likes of as you say the likes of Richie McCarthy the likes of um Shams Hickey that these these should have been the guys who really stood up and were were taking the game to Clare where they were kind of relying on their younger players like they do have very very good younger players and like they actually have a right shot of winning the under 21 all Ireland this year so they do have guys coming through but there does seem like the fellows who have kind of got caught in that in in that middle um that middle ground between we'll say the leaders that were around in 2000 yeah but this under 21 argument like, yeah. like look at Cavan in the football like it's it's yeah I don't it's yeah, a different kettle of fish like, under 21 it's a different it, but, yeah, yeah I, I, I'm not convinced I'm not convinced that those players will progress um, yeah, but, like I mean, I don't. I mean, it's it's going to be very, very hard in regards to like like qualifiers from here on in because they might get a decent like they might get a grand first game, but then like Tipper always going to be waiting in that second round qualifier or the loser of um, the loser Cork Watford and you know at the minute you can't see Limerick beating any of them. That I can't see it anyway. How did the All Ireland prices and and Munster prices uh, uh, change um, after Clare's win, uh, Paddy? Yeah, not massively for all Ireland wise, you know, because it didn't really affect Galway and Kilkenny. Obviously, our tip who are out of Munster now, like Waterford stayed where they were. Clare obviously um, came in. I think we were nines before the match. were six to one now for the All Ireland. Like uh, Clare were, Clare were grand. They were probably better value than the four point win. But like, as you said, I mean, it wasn't the greatest game in the world. Like I, I just kind of keep looking at that Shane O'Donnell second goal. Like you know, if he was playing Waterford, so he was playing Tip, Kilkenny, or Galway, there's no way he'd have been able to score that second goal because somebody would have absolutely lifted him out. Um, <laughs> yes. But yeah, like I mean, I wouldn't, I would, I wasn't blown away by Clare or anything. Like like they still, they still will have a, a decent shot in the Munster final. But like if it's Waterford that come through, I just think Waterford are a better team, and I think Waterford would be better equipped to beat them in Munster. Chow, I get the impression if, if, if that Munster final had went on for 70 days rather than 70 minutes that Clare still would have won by four or five points. It just, 
halfway through the second half, it was just inevitable. Would would you be interested in Clare at six to one for the All Ireland? Um, yeah, I suppose it is, it's not a bad price. I I I prefer six to one over Clare. I suppose to Galway at eleven to four. You know, um, they they have been there before, and they still have a, there's a good there's a good skeleton to the team there. Um, and I like the fact that they have they have co management uh, over the team. You know, I, I, those two managers they're they're not they're not interested in the limelight or anything. They're they're interested in in the team, you know, and uh, what's good for the team. Um, so yeah, no, look at they're they're they're, they're in the shout, and you, you can't rule them out. Six to one, not too bad. Fair yeah, enough. Yeah, and, and they they have forwards, which is which is key, and they they have goals written all over them every time uh, you see them playing. So yeah, I, I wouldn't be. A, Opposed to something small on on Clare going all the way, and um, moving on to this week's this weekend's game, um, eagerly anticipated clash between Wexford and Kilkenny. Cha, what's the what's the vibes like uh, down in uh, Kilkenny? Are we confident going into this one? Um, I wouldn't say we're confident. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty. Um, the team is unsettled. The team actually they trained last night and the team wasn't named. So Brian Cody is going to name the team uh, just before the throw-in. Which, is that unusual? Did that happen um, during your time? It, it, it did happen before. Remember, I was pitched in against Clare, and I only found out twenty minutes beforehand, or about half an hour beforehand. Uh, I, I, I look at all the players. It keeps the players on their toes, but it shows a sign of you know uncertainty in the camp. The players, some of the players, don't even know who's starting. Um, I know that there's some injuries, injury concerns. Um, Rumours are that Porig Welsh could be could be back, could be starting, but I don't know. Um, apparently, Mick Fenley uh, pulled up in training during the week, but I don't know how bad it is. So there's question marks over him. Um, Ger Edwards is back. He played well with the club there recently, and um, he's expected to start. But the team is is far from settled, and. Um, just a lot of a lot of question marks, and we won't know until until Saturday evening at seven o'clock. Who's and you've played on a lot of uh, Kilkenny teams over the years, and t- uh, you were part of teams that were written off. You were part of teams that we thought would win the All Ireland ten years in a row. How does this current Kilkenny team, if if they have everyone compared to the to the really good ones, there's still the, the you know ten or twelve players there that are top top class, isn't there? Yeah, like, I mean, in fairness to Brian Cody, he's able to get the best out of, out of these players, you know. Um, I, In my opinion, the biggest difference would be the, the strength and depth. You know, if, if, if lads are injured there, um, you know, you probably don't have really top-class players to come, come in off the bench. Um, so I, I think that's that's the main difference. And, you know, you see Tipperary last year, like, their bench was very strong and you need competition um, to, if, if you're going to be successful for the year, because it just keeps like, keeps lads on their toes, and you know, no complacency set, sets in. You know, so um, probably strength and depth may be the main difference. Paddy Davy Fitzgerald has come in and had an instant impact with uh, with Wexford. Like to beat Limerick and Galway and get out of that Division One B was a brilliant, brilliant achievement so early on in his tenure. Um, this would this would top the lot now, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, and we're still wondering how he came out at Pierce Stadium with the win that day, because, Jesus, I don't know how... Don't want to talk about it, Paddy. We've got over. <laughs> don't want to talk about it. Um, yeah, like, you know, I've, I've I've heard kind of comparisons with nearly Jose Mourinho about him, because he just comes in and it's kind of instant success, and then, you know, sometimes he can outstay his welcome in places, but, like, he has the motor in very well. Um, like you say, like, that was... That was that was a phenomenal performance to get out of um, to get out of Division One B because it was like it was as strong as it's been in a couple of years now with this year with Galway in it and to go and beat Kilkenny in Nolan Park was was a massive massive performance as well. But this is, you know, this is this is another level onto that. Like like this is going to be like it's going to take everything for 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 Wexford. Like I, I agree with uh, in the sense that um, you would worry about Kilkenny strength at top, but if they have their fifteen, like like. Their fifteen of their strongest players, if everyone is fit, is is still as good as any team in the country. You know, like I, I would worry in terms of injury that like in 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 the last couple of years, I think Cody would have just named a team, and you know if somebody was fit, 
you know, he'd have thrown them in last minute. Like, it's obviously he's very, very worried if he's not naming a team into just beforehand. And I'd imagine that most of it is down to Mick Fenley because, like, he's 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 going to be a massive player for them this year if, if they can get him on the field because he's had so many injury problems um, over the last, like, over the last year or two. Um, but, like, if Fenley plays, if Jarrell was back to the hurling he was doing in 2015, like, obviously, Richie, um, TJ will both have to play every game and if Park Walsh is back like then that's that's all of a sudden that looks like a really really strong Kilkenny team again you know and people are writing off Kilkenny and obviously you can go back to that quarter final performance against Wexford but Wexford are well up for that like people doubting their league form like they started poorly but they still beat Cork by seven points they drew a Tipperary and then they hammered Dublin like the, it's not as bad as, as people are saying really is it Paddy? No absolutely not like I mean before that game like we laid Tipperary very very heavily for that league game down in um, down in Semple. You know everyone had had been written off. This is you know this is the final nail in the Kilkenny coffin. Now that Tipperary are going to go out and beat them by ten points and all this and like Kilkenny played like TJ in particular played really really well. That I think day he scored three like, five really, that day. Didn't yeah, he was unbelievable that day. But that just shows like that just kind of woke people up a bit that you know when they will as I said like when they have everyone on the pitch like when they have their first fifteen, they're they're not far off anybody and like it's it's very very premature in a really open hurling year like like. With the, at this stage of the year, you know, since I've been covering it, since I've been even following Harlan, I can't remember like an 11 for the field for an All Ireland. And like Kilkenny are 7 to 2, and they're right, they're right there. Anyone who tells you that they've no chance of winning the All Ireland is just talking off it, to be honest. Cha, what will Brian Cody's mantra be going into this game? What will he be telling the players this week and, and in his team talk before the game? Will he Does he go down the route of, lads, everybody's writing us off, like we're finished, we'll prove them wrong kind of thing? Or is he is he a little bit um, more technical than that? Well, June the 10th would have been a date that would have been mentioned an awful lot over the last couple of months. And uh, I know Kilkenny, the boys were away in the weekend in Carton House. Uh, so, the, so like... They've been they've been targeting this uh, targeting the game tomorrow um, with a long long time, um, and the one thing for, for sure is that the players will be absolutely wound up for this, ready ready to go. You know, no matter which fifteen take to take to the field. And they you know. like I, I presume, like you all hear this, you know, oh, we don't read papers, we don't read papers. When you were playing, I presume you read the papers. Um, yeah, I know you like it's, it's hard to avoid them to be honest, and, and like nowadays. You know, you have your phone there, and there's apps. You're like, it, it's very hard to avoid all that. It's just, it depends. What, you know, it depends how you are mentally. If you let all that stuff affect you, you just shouldn't be reading it. As simple as that. I would decide, lad, you might read something, and it just water off a duck's back. It does. It wouldn't bother you. It just depends on the on the player, the individual, uh, how how they are mentally, really. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I think but, everybody uh, affects it differently. But uh, just as regards the team, like I mean, um, any team. You know, it just a lot of it revolves around TJ Reid and Richie Hogan, and you know, if 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 Wexford are able to cancel those out, we're in big trouble. It's simple as that, and and they kind of did that in in Nolan Park. So, um, how did they do that's, it? That's that's probably our biggest concern. Um, they just they they probably they probably pick a guy that they think is you know good enough for him, physical enough for him. Um, but uh, I wouldn't say they resort to you know dirty tactics or anything, but. Uh, yeah, it, like if 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 those two lads are cancelled out, we, we're in trouble straight away. Hmm. And and Paddy betting on this match, um, where has the money been this week? As uh, Kilkenny, I presume the 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 big punters would prefer to back Kilkenny potentially than back Wexford in the handicap or something like that, would they? I presume yeah, it's the safer much, bet yeah. of the two. Well, that's it. Like, I mean, we threw it up the evening. The Wexford beat Leash, and since then, like, obviously, in the match betting, we're we're seeing like we're seeing decent money for Wexford now, and obviously, like, they do fancy themselves, and they obviously see the three to one, and like, it's great whenever Wexford have any chance of winning a match, they always back themselves. So, like, um, in the match betting, that's where we're seeing it. We're starting to see a little bit more money on the. Uh, we're kind of under on the Kilkenny handicap, and like I'd say, that's what we're going to lay kind of Throw closer the to the. Um, there to us, Paddy, for the win yeah, it's uh, it's. it's yeah, it's a three to one Wexford. The draw is ten to one. Kilkenny are one to three. It's a four point handicap. Even money Wexford handicap draws twelve to one, and Kilkenny minus four is ten to eleven. Before we get the best bet on, in, in this match chat, I want the name of one player and one player only that you think could make an impact coming in on from the high grass, long grass, even 
you know, that just might take the summer by storm in Kilkenny. Like, there's always one every year. I think about 25 years ago, you were this player. But who is the player that's going to take the summer by storm for Kilkenny? Another Ger Aylward or somebody like that. Is there anybody yeah. that you're really looking forward to? Um, there's one player, and uh, there's rumours now that he might be starting as well. It's more uncertainty. And oh, I, I like know, the sound of this. Uh, I like Bright the sound Cole, of this. He was supposed to play under 21 against Dublin uh, a couple of weeks ago, and he had a touch of a... Um, a hamstring injury, but Brian Cody said not to risk him. So that means he's obviously thinking of starting him against Wexford. A uh, young lad from Inistegan is called Richie Lahey. Um, so, Lahey. Yeah, so don't be surprised if he's if he's starting tomorrow. Like I said, we're all in the dark. Um, and, um, yeah, he could, he could make Where might he play, Jack? He'd be a forward as far as I know. Well, okay. Okay. So yeah, maybe yeah, maybe Conor probably, probably wing that. forward or corner forward, but yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he had a pretty decent league and um, uh, preseason point as well. Um, he's that, actually uh, not in our betting, but we'll 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 try to win the first goal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Uh, we'll, we'll yeah. he'll he'll be around like like we've Liam Blanchfield in there, but he might start ahead of him. So I'd say he'd be about nine to one for a first goal there. Okay, that could um, be interesting. And yeah, uh, another, uh, just yeah, another another player there. He, he obviously he's very well known as Colin Fenley. Now Colin is is completely red hot or, or ice cold you know but when when, when he's on song he's uh, he's virtually unmarkable so if if Colin got got going you know it'd take, take a lot of the pressure off TJ Wally Welch and Richie Hogan and these guys you know and if, is he is he on song at the moment in training and stuff uh, Jack? Um, you just don't know what I mean. he, he doesn't really produce it on the gallops and he goes out then and you know, he, could, he could fly home you know <laughs> Okay, so not like like myself, not the best trainer in the world. <laughs> uh, would you would you be fancying him for first goal scorer potentially if he is on a going day, uh, Chad? Um, yeah, yeah. If I'm going to have a have a bet on that, maybe maybe Colin Fenley for first goal. And and uh, and the and the best bet on the coupon, uh, Chad. What would you be looking at? Um, to be honest, I, I I you know Kilkenny are priced up on reputation, and they want a three to go down and train to beat Wexford in Wexford Park. And, with, with all the uncertainty in league form and, you know, getting well bet, beaten by tip last year, I, I, it's certainly the one thing I wouldn't be hopping off Kilkenny at 1-3. Um, if I was a neutral supporter or from Wexford, I, th- I think the bet could be Wexford half-time, full-time. They were 9-1 to one with Paddy Power. Like, if Wexford are going to win, they're going to need a good start. And if they're ahead at half-time, well, the crowd, your Wexford supporters, you know how good they are. Uh, you know, it would be hard, hard to peg back if they were ahead at half time and like for me it's a 50-50 game that's of a kind but yeah, um, just on, on a value value basis or if it's a neutral, well, neutral well, basis uh, uh, I certainly do agree on that if, if anybody out there does fancy Wexford like it's very hard to see them coming from behind at half time and winning the game so I, I yeah. can see where you're coming yeah. from what, what price is that Paddy? Yeah, I think we we actually trimmed it in a bit. I think it's eight to one now because that's because uh, yeah, Chad backed it at nine to one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's it. That's <laughs> I, I wouldn't back John Street and Kilkenny, all those shafts as well. There was a couple of grand knocking around. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what's what's your uh, bet uh, here, Paddy? Yeah, Chad kind of took the words out of my mouth. Really, I, t- I think that Conor Fenley is going to have like th- these are the kind of games, like you say, he can just take fire. Like I thought, I'd say it to one around there for a first goal score. Like nothing really interested me too much in the match because I think Kenny are going to win. But you know, it's it's like a four point handicap. His four point handicap is fair enough, I think. So I think Conor Fenley first goal around seven or eight to one is, is uh, would be a decent enough play. The bet that caught my eye here. Um Kilkenny won Leinster last year, but they didn't concede a goal against either Galway or uh, Dublin last year. They kept two clean sheets under 1.5 uh, Wexford goals. So Wexford to score no goal or one goal. I think it's around 5-6, to six, is that right, Paddy? Uh, we're 4-6, to six, aren't we? 4-6, to six, okay, well. Um, still might be a bit of value in that. I, I, I can see Wexford getting two goals, um, and it could be lower scoring than we think. So there we go, that's Wexford and Kilkenny um, this weekend. Uh, so now it's time for the best bets of the weekend. This will not be beaten. Okay, so Connor Mortimer, your best bet of the weekend? Uh, it's mine to be the handicap of minus one against Cav. Chat, your banker of the weekend is? Uh, God, no bankers. I, 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 I go Said with Colin conviction. Fenley. <laughs> Colin Fenley, first goal. Okay, so Chat Fitzpatrick has gone for Ka- Colin Fenley, first goal scorer at 8 to 1. Paddy Hearn? Yeah, I'll go back to the big ball and I'll say um, Westmead minus one at even money. So Westmead minus one against Offaly. And I am the only member of the team now, 
I've had a 100% attendance record, but I'm the only member of the team to get my nap up every week so far. Um, so Mead minus five last week and no down goal or no dairy goal the week before. And I'm telling you now, Paddy Ahern from Paddy Powers, Mayo will beat Galway by more than two points. So I'm going to go Mayo minus two, 11 to 10. Uh, yeah, 11 to 10, yeah. There we and, go. Uh, That's the yeah. You must have had a rabbit's foot in your pocket last week to get that mead bet up because I don't know how they covered that handicap. What but do you mean you don't know how they covered the handicap? Surely it was another draw with about twelve minutes left or something like that. Um, uh, I remember trading the game and I was thinking, God, how were they covering this? Well, I was at the game, right? And uh, if you had said to somebody after the game that Mead won by sixteen points, they would have said ah, that was probably a fair reflection of the game. They had nine clear. And you're talking chances. too many mead fellas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're being very harsh there, Paddy. Um, but anyway, we got the bet up anyway. That's all that matters. We collected. Uh, so that's the that's the best weekend bets. And, and that's it for this week's show. Um, my thanks to Conor Mortimer, who, who looked at the Mayo-Galway match and went through the football matches, and to James Chaff Fitzpatrick for his thoughts on the Wexford-Kilkenny clash this weekend. And as always, my thanks to Paddy Ahern from Paddy Powers. Don't forget to join us next week on the GA Postcast. Paddy's gearing up for the GAA All-Ireland Football and Hurling. For all live TV championship games, it's money back as a free bet if your losing first goal scorer scores a goal anytime. Max £20. Excludes shops. T's and C's apply. 18 plus. BeGambleAware.org.